Enzyme Reactors, a video by Bailey Horton, Maxwell Tracy, and Stephen Lamb. Enzyme reactors are, as one would imagine, reactors that utilize enzymes to initiate reactions. An enzyme is a class of catalyst produced by living organisms that can accelerate a reaction. They typically have high complexity and molecular weight, are not used up in reaction, and are very specific to the reaction they are used in. The picture shown here demonstrates the lock and key model of enzymes. The substrate bonds the active site of an enzyme, which lowers the activation energy and allows a reaction to take place, and products are created. In the process, the enzyme is not depleted as a reactant. A familiar example of this occurs with the enzyme lactase during the digestion of the sugar lactose, which is found in dairy products. Lactose, the substrate, bonds to lactase, the enzyme, and is broken down into the monosaccharides glucose and galactose. These products are then reacted in other digestive processes in series, alongside hundreds of parallel reactions. Despite all the chemicals present in the stomach, lactase only reacts with lactose. In this sense, the stomach can be thought of as a very complex biological enzyme reactor. In this video, we will refer to any enzyme catalyzed reactions as enzyme fermentation, just as Octave Levenspiel does in Chapter 27 in Re Chemical Reaction Engineering. With the discussion of enzymes, I would now like to follow up with the importance of enzyme fermentation and what it really does. Defined by Levenspiel, one can say that enzyme fermentation is classified as a biological process promoted by chemicals produced by microorganisms. In other words, you can think of fermentation as reactions where the or raw organic feed is converted into product by the action of enzymes. In addition, the bioethanol production process shown would represent one of the many ways of how enzyme fermentation would be used. With a clear understanding of enzyme fermentation, I will now discuss a method called Michelis mentin kinetics, which is practically a quantitative aspect of observing enzyme fermentation. The MM kinetics method indeed states that the, re the rate of the reaction would be equal to the total enzyme multiplied by the concentration of A over the Michelis constants plus the concentration of A times K. Based on the graph shown, one can understand that at high enzyme concentrations, the rate would be independent of CA, whereas rate would be first order with respect to CA at low concentration. Anything in between would represent a portion portionality to the enzyme concentration. After understanding the expression of MM kinetics, there are special features to the MM equation that can be observed. These special features dictate how one concentration would affect in others based on certain sections of the curve. The graph shown, without a doubt, did an amazing job of organizing these features. Next, we will look at the reaction kinetics of a PFR and batch enzyme reactor. The design equation to the left isn't meant to scare you, but draw your attention to how you already know how to analyze it. It was previously shown that the enzyme kinetics can have a partially first order and partially zeroth order rate law. By rearranging the design equation, one can isolate this complicated expression into an easier linear equation. The left-hand side is y, the negative CM term is B, the product of the rate constant and the initial enzyme concentration is M, and the fraction on the right is X. This method is shown on the graph to the right. The top graph demonstrates if one wanted to find the rate constant as the slope, and the second graph on the bottom shows the results if one wanted to find the, the product of the rate constant with the initial enzyme concentration as the slope. This method should seem familiar to you, as it was often employed through the differential method to find the order of a power rate law. Next is the CSTR analysis. The equations shown are different from that of the batch reactor, but are similar in that the design equation has been reorganized to enable a linear graph of the data. This one is a little simpler though. The y value is CA, the v value is negative CM, the x value is the fraction on the right, and the rate constant is the m. The graphs shown on the right are the analogous graphs for a CSTR, as they serve the same purpose as the pr previous graphs.